Well, uh, that's awkward because my chat is actually over my <laughs> over my screen. Uh, how's everybody doing? Welcome back. I don't have any kind of fancy intro, so uh, I figured let me move this actually real quick. There we go. Uh, that way, the next time I don't have to worry about that. I uh, hope everybody's doing well today. Today we're going to be doing some talking about Aquatico and WW2 Rebuilder. I think they're both going to be pretty fun. My chair just, come on. My chair is just not cooperating with me. Uh, there we go. I think they're both going to be pretty fun games, and I hope they are. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, Aquatico first, and then we'll do WW2 Rebuilder after. Uh, I've got some YouTube videos pulled up uh, somewhere... Uh, I've got too many windows here. Uh, Aquatico teaser. Okay, cool. Yeah, got all that ready. Uh, hope everybody's doing well, though. Bud, Moonshadow, Karsten, how's it going? Hope y'all are doing well today. Ethan, what's up? How are you? Hope you're doing well. Freezing rain all day today. I'm staying home where it's safe. Oh, man, we just... My power went out uh, about 45 minutes ago. I was getting ready to get everything going, and I was going to do it at... I was going to start at 12, but... Um, my power flashed on and off and shut everything down. And when it came back up, since I didn't close anything out, none of my settings saved. I had to redo it all uh, and get everything set back up. So crazy, though. It just shut down on me completely. Uh, Eden says, I was up, Eden. How's it going? Crystal, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, but yeah, so I figured talking Tuesday, we'll do these once a month, maybe. So February, the second, first week of February, maybe second week of February. Probably first week because we got... Um, um, Wild West coming out uh, on the second week of February. So probably do those. Uh, this comes out on the 12th, and uh, WW2 Rebuilder comes out on the 16th. So I figured I'd just go ahead and knock these out today. Uh, we'll do this, and then at the end, if, if we get done with these, we may just do some do some chatting or whatever. So uh, checking out other games. Any any info y'all might have, if y'all want to throw some, some games out there for me to look at, I will. Uh, I'll kind of show off some of the other ones I've picked up in the last day or two that I've got on my wish list now that I'm going to be looking at playing some and uh, that kind of stuff too. So let's get into Aquatico. Uh, so there's a demo out right now. It comes out on the 12th, which is uh, next Thursday. Next Thursday. Um, Aquatico is a, a survival city builder set within the depths of the sea, strategically build an underwater city atop the ocean floor, and face the challenges that accompany an ocean life. So that sounds tough. This is from the same devs as um, Patron. You guys remember playing Patron? That was a fun game. So Or same publishing company, Overseer Games. Um, it, it, same publisher, but uh, it should be really good uh, if it's anything close to Patron. Patron was a really good game. Uh, real quick, news how did you survive last night? I woke up at 2.30 a.m. with a tornado siren. I, apparently, Miss Deuce woke up. I slept right through it. I, I rolled over and grabbed my phone and looked at the time at some point. That's probably when all the storms were rolling through, but I went right back to sleep. I was out cold. So, I don't know. I just slept right through it. <laughs> I rolled right back over and went right back to sleep. Didn't even care. Celtic Moon, how's it going? Good to see you. Um... But yeah, just went right back to sleep. Wasn't too bad. Uh, so plan release date is January 12th, 2023. The game plan is to unlock in eight days, approximately. Not not specific, but approximate. And we could go through the, the these here, but I got videos pulled up on YouTube we're going to check out. Did, did we lose it for a minute? It looks like we lost it for a minute. Wow, that was weird. I've never had my connection interrupted like that. That's very strange. Uh, okay, I'm not sure where we left off, so I have no idea. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, we lost it for a minute. That is weird. I've never had my connection just drop out like that. Well, not since I've had this this internet anyway. Uh, very strange. I guess my internet just hiccuped for a second. Which, with the power outages and stuff, I guess, makes sense. Uh, like the best city builders, it's also fun to take a few minutes just to sit back and watch things happen in Aquatico. There are some lovely animations as the various production buildings churn out resources. And it's, see and, it's, and it's fun seeing my human citizens walk around in their domes or trudging across the seafloor in mech-like diving suits. So that's kind of cool. Uh, Tech Raptor says the vertical split is an interesting gameplay choice that makes sense from a story standpoint too. 
Uh, real estate comes at a premium underwater as its brilliant idea for making the most out of what little space you have. So that's kind of cool too. Um, I agree with that. So we read this part. This is the same uh, description as up here, I do believe. Um, no, it's not the same. Aquatico is an underwater su survival city builder set in the ocean floor. The Earth's surface has become barren wasteland, forcing humanity to pour any remaining hope for new beginning under the depths of the sea. Upon discovering a world below the tides, the opportunity to start over is within reach. Despite the new beginning and the dangers, dangers and challenges that lie ahead and won't make, uh, lie ahead won't make surviving under the sea a simple task. So that's pretty neat. Uh, then we go here. Uh, build your water world. Okay, I've seen the movie. It's it's pretty good. The movie's pretty good. Build a unique underwater city to escape a dying world. Survive the challenges to the of the sea, and construct your base over multiple levels. Use the seabed. To build more efficient, uh, to build to build core infrastructure and production facilities, while the doomed layers above will house your people from the dangers of the depths. Domed, not doomed. Domed. I'm I'm thinking doomed because of the. I'm just reading uh, the domed layers above to shield your people from the dangers of the depths. So that's very cool. Uh, PC requirements, uh, 64 bit, of course. Windows 10 uh, is minimum required. So. Uh, which I don't think that's probably the case. Uh, processor, they recommend an i5-3470 or an AMD Ryzen 3 uh, for minimum, 8 gigs of RAM, GTX 1050, 3 gig or AMD, uh, <clears throat> Radeon RX 560, 4 gig, 10 gigs of available storage space. That's that's a lot. That is a lot. You can find all this on Steam. The links are down below for both these games, by the way. If you want to check the description, you can. Uh, the recommended is an i7-3770 or AMD Ryzen 5 1600, 8 gigs of RAM, 1066 gig, AMD Radeon RX 596 gig, uh, 10 gigs available space. So not too bad. Uh, other games like this would be Against the Storm. Rim when did Against the Storm come out? Oh, it came out this year? Wow, how did I miss that game? Uh, RimWorld, uh, Zion. I guess is how you say it. I don't know. Uh, and then similar to games you played, Farthest Frontier, of course, really fun. Land of the Vikings, of course, really fun. They're both city builders, so there you go. Uh, let's check out some of the pictures here, and we will go to the first YouTube video. We're going to go through a few of these videos. Uh, I just really want to look around at some of the detail and, and be mindful of what's actually happening here. Um, it looks like there's a pretty good UI. It's pretty clean, too. It's not, uh, it doesn't look like it's overbearing, which is nice. And I know people have already done the demo and they've already put out videos. Some of the bigger content creators get early access to the full game. They've already done all that. I get all that. I understand. Uh, I understand all that 100%. Uh, but the, uh, the UI looks good. It looks like there's some food there, maybe. There's some clothing here, maybe. I'm not sure what that is. Diamonds, maybe that's money. Uh, maybe tech right there. I'm just kind of looking at this. Let me switch over to a live view here and see, uh, let you guys get a bigger view. Um, so Deep Sea 9, I guess is the name of the town. June year 4, 20 Celsius. That's, that's comfortable weather, or comfortable temperature anyway. Um, looks like power is plus 1279. So there's power there. There's water here. Maybe that's food then. Maybe that's not. I'm not sure. Uh, oxygen tank probably plus 403. So we're probably gonna have to produce all that stuff for our citizens. It's kind of weird. Kind of, it's kind of, or it's kind of weird to, to think you're gonna have to produce oxygen tanks, but we are. Uh, maybe that's funds because that looks like coins stacked up. That looks like bread. Uh, and I'm just guessing at this. So. Um, but yeah, th this all looks really good. I like the clean UI it's got. Looks like down here, they're hovering maybe over, looks like a pipeline. Uh, electric, uh, network capacity is 20, uh, 2112. Required amount is 833. So, uh, it's telling us, that, I guess, that this pipeline requires 833, or maybe that building does. I'm not real sure. The pipeline is transporting crude oil, fuel, electricity, and oxygen, it seems. So... Maybe it can do all those. Maybe it's producing, uh, maybe it's only pumping one of these. I'm not sure. Uh, hollow markers, color. All buildings, selected pipeline, connected building, and broken connection building is what that says right there. So that's kind of neat. 
A lot of little detail here, too, if you look. It's, it looks really good. It looks like the seafloor, though. Uh, I could definitely make some SpongeBob jokes out of this. I think this is going to be kind of fun, uh, honestly. The domes look really nice, too. Look at that. Looks really good. Hey, what's up, Bone? How's it going, bud? Did I see Bone sneak in? Yeah, there he is. Bone, Smudo, how's it going? Yeah, the detail here looks really good. It looks like there's some sort of a statue over there, maybe. I don't know. And then it looks like we got a, uh, a distribution line. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's transport for people. Maybe it's transport for materials. I don't know. Uh, between a tower and another tower here. Uh, the domes look really good, though. You can see how big these domes are, because those are light poles right there. Uh, that's, that's, that's a pretty decent size dome. All right, here we go. We just direct under the ocean shot here. We got cargo... Crew Overview, Crystal Cavern. So uh, it looks like we have little submarines we can send out, maybe. A recent underwater quake has opened the soul and formed an interest to, entrance to a mysterious cavern. The locally, the, 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 the locality, the locality? The locality is filled with strange, shouldn't that be something else? Local, I mean, that's like your position. Uh, the locality is filled with strange gems, with, filled with strange gems of unknown origin. If we decide to make further steps, our, our exp, exp, our expeditionary force, I'll get this out in a minute, expeditionary force should conduct a dangerous, uh, should conduct, conduct a dangerous process of securing the site. Should conduct a, should conduct a dangerous process of, I feel like this word is really strange. Maybe it's just me because I'm simple-minded. That's probably what it is. Uh, but uh, either way, it looks like you can send people out on expeditions, which makes sense because you're going to need materials. You're going to need food. You're going to need other things, which food shouldn't be a problem. Just make a fish trap or tin. You know, I think that'd be fun. <laughs> I think that'd be fun. Uh, let's see. We got uh, lots of maybe boxes and storage stuff here. The trees and stuff look really good. The plants... Uh, our oxygen, of course, is producing oxygen. Uh, the cities look really good, and I like that it's not like one big dome. It's a bunch of small connected cities. That's kind of cool. And you see all your little walkways and catwalks and stuff through and underneath and above. It looks like it stacks. It's really cool, too. Uh, but some little barrels and boxes. And I don't know what these different buildings are, but I'm sure we will find out when we start playing. So here's a sushi bar. That's kind of neat. Uh, chef efficiency, active, and uh, painting. You can paint, you can activate it. Efficiency, it looks like you can put uh, one chef in there, one of one, it says. That's kind of cool. Expansion, you can expand, you can optimize. Production boost, uh, the upkeep is 40-something. I can't tell what that is. Cost is 90 credits, 15 glass, 10 tools, and 5 furniture. Uh, bonuses, plus 10% production, so that's pretty good. Uh, I guess that's for optimization or production boost. That's production boost, yeah. Uh, pretty neat, though. Sushi bar. I like the way it looks, too. It looks really good. Looks really good. What's next, too? We got six, We got 10 screenshots to get through. So, uh, Is this Biodome? Is Polyshore going to pop out? I, I hope not. I mean, I wouldn't mind, honestly. I like Polyshore. Uh, so there's our people. There's a cat walking around in here. Uh, <laughs> there's a cat walking around in an underwater dome. That seems like it's bad. Honestly, uh, I like that the buildings actually have the, the building signs hanging off of them. Uh, looks like some satellite stuff here. I don't know how that works. Maybe maybe there's like, maybe it's local uh, satellites. You know what I mean? They use it just to bounce off one big satellite right above the station or whatever. that's still underwater. Um, and then back to the other places. Maybe there's actually still satellites in space. I don't know. Uh, all our people just chilling on the chilling on the benches, probably taking a break from their work for the day. There's some clothing on a rack right here too. I didn't even see that. Pretty neat. All right, what do we got next? Oh, there's a there's our crew, I guess, going out to uh, do an expedition, maybe, or coming back with one, possibly. Uh, looks like there's some some so the, one of the comments, one of the reviews said something about a mech, you know, walking around in mech armor. That's what this looks like. This must be like first before you get the domes built or something, because. Uh, I, do, I don't see any people walking around. I see the mech suits, and I see this. And then we see a couple of different buildings here. Uh, but the, the landscape looks really good, though. Ooh, that's a lot. That's a lot of buildings right there. Expedition home. So it looks like we have to build one of these for expeditions. 
That's pretty neat, though. Storage capacity says zero. That's kind of weird. You'd think you'd have more than that. Uh, looks like the UI down here at the bottom also gives us some buttons we can click to, to kind of open things up. So you're, here again is the pipe network that is showing you uh, broken connection building. So the, there's a red here. I'm guessing whatever the building is is a broken connection, it looks like. Uh, small statue. Yeah, so we can make statues for artwork to keep people happy, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, that's kind of neat, though. It's looking really good. This looks really nice. It really does. It looks good. What's up, Gabriel? How's it going? Hope you're doing well today, bud. After a crazy work recently. Oh, I bet, man. I bet, yeah. So, again, this comes out on the on the 12th. Hopefully, anyway. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the Aquatico teaser, and then we'll check out some other videos from the channel as well. It looks really cool. Uh, and yeah, that's definitely before they get the domes built. You can see everybody walking around in their suits. Coming fall 2022. It looks like that's not the only game that got uh, set back a bit either because um, there's lots of games we were supposed to be getting, but we don't have yet. So uh, that's pretty neat. All right, let's jump over here. Uh, real quick and check out the other videos. Let's see, that was the teaser, I believe. Yeah, I think that was the teaser. So let's check out. Um, so here's a tutorial for pipelines. There's the demo teaser. There's the Aquatico teaser. I think that's the first. Yeah, you see down here, there's some Patreon too. Or our patron, I guess. We played that. That was a great game. So here's the teaser. Here's some alpha footage. Uh, there's the demo teaser. We could watch that one, maybe. 42 seconds. Let's watch this one. Next Fest. Digital Reef Games. Build Your Water World. Survive the Ocean. Choose your development. What are those things? Hmm. Explore the depths. Yeah, expeditions are going to be fun, it looks like. All right, cool. Demo available October 3rd. All right, cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, we missed we missed this um, uh, demo for sure. I didn't even I didn't even play the demo. Uh, should we check out the Aquatico Diary population? Let's check this out. Seven minute video, so this is going to take a little while, which is fine. I mean, that's that's what today's for. That's what these talking days are for right here. Hello, hello gamers, and welcome to another short video from Aquatico Tutorial. And today we are going to talk about population, right? So uh, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about how you get it. We're going to talk about uh, how you actually control it. We're going to talk about where they work, when they, where they live, and what they eat, and what they need for a satisfactory life, okay? So this is what we actually need. Uh, we need people to, of course, get your town running up and running and uh, for your town to be prosperous and successful uh, as you build sur surface base one this is the second already upgraded version of this building but when you get subsurface base one you get by default two people that are going to start and to help you build your city man and uh, a female how do you grow uh, with your populace well you grow with your populace by certain events that actually your Atlantis headquarters, uh, so your HQ is actually sending people your way alongside with drones and people. You get it through certain um, buildings that you need to research in this research tree. And they are actually called Expedition House and Rescue Center. 
You actually get them uh, as expedition house when you build it. It has missions and quests, and along so with all these quests and missions that you can actually uh, explore, uh, uh, you can actually have missions to save people and you save two three four people and bring, bring them back to town you don't need to do that missions if your populace is on point rescue well that's pretty cool so you can send uh your expeditions can actually bring people back to your development uh unlike something like um stranded alien dawn right where we start with four people and that's a limited amount uh it looks like it, since it's a city builder, we're probably going to have more people, but it still looks like we're going to have to bring people back, too. And as the years progress, of course, the city builders is going to go a lot faster. As the years progress, uh, your citizens are probably having uh, having kids and stuff, too. So, uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people that are not going to make it this game, for sure. There is there is still a demo for the game, but I'm not going to play it because it comes out next Thursday. So we're just going to be we're going to be streaming it next Thursday, I think. Uh, let's continue on here center also rescue center by default you're not controlling it you just turn on that building and that building works like every 30 40 days they send a rescue team and they save one two people and bring them back to your town that's pretty cool so there's a rescue center you can just build and I, it'll automatically send people out and bring people back that's pretty cool so if you need people you can just turn on those buildings or you can just choose those missions and you can uh, refill and um, your populace in a city so where pretty do cool. they live they live in domes this is small dome there is medium dome and there is a large dome but for now we're going to stick with the small dome that's a small dome okay cool so we will be able to build different size domes that's cool uh, I'm glad to know that because starting out, I'm not good at any game like this. None. They live in houses. <laughs> not one. And uh, they are here without suits. Outside the domes, they are in suits, walking, working. Oh, and that's cool. Helping society grow. Inside, they are without suits. They are breathing fresh air, living in houses, and working mostly inside domes. There are a couple of production buildings that are going to use people uh, so they will work outside domes, but most of the workforce for people in your populace is going to be inside domes. This is clothes shop, let's say one of the uh, basic goods buildings. Tailor working, not tailor drone. We're going to show you this. This is a plastic drone, uh, factory drone. This is battery factory drone. So drones are working mostly outside. Uh so we're going to have drones that work and do stuff too. Uh, mostly outside and your people work mostly inside. That's pretty awesome, actually. Uh, that's pretty well thought out. Because I was thinking about this too. I was like, man, how is this going to work? Because I haven't watched anybody play this. So I was like, how is this going to work with uh, different um, elements outside, right? But you're going to have drones. So uh, Not mostly. All of the drones are working outside the domes. All of the, None drones. of the drones is working inside the domes. Inside the domes, only humans work. With a couple of uh, production buildings that are outside domes, where people we work also. What do we else do we need to um, say? Uh, so, we are going to talk about happiness, right? Let me, uh, let me give you guys the, the full view for this. This is your overall happiness of your society. This is what you need to pay attention to. Um, like as oxygen, food, warmth, health, basic goods, luxury goods, education, religion, housing, and environment exist, you actually need to pay attention to each one for your populace to be happy, for you not to have any problems with your population. Because when some of these um, things drop to zero, you having big problems on your hand and your people will leave the town. Trust me they will leave uh, so let's talk about food medicine basic goods and luxury you need to pay before we talk about food uh, medicine and basic luxury let's talk about the fact he said if your happiness is not up people will leave we're gonna have people leave for sure absolutely gonna have people leave yeah there's probably a lot of broadcast right now but it's probably not uh, these guys overseer publishing this is this is actually their YouTube channel so I'm gonna go ahead and subscribe and like to uh, on the video uh, I'll try to leave a link down below the description after the stream for uh, their channel. You can just go check out all their videos instead of each video because it's all coming from one. I'll just leave the link to their uh, YouTube channel here and you can go check them out later. Pay attention to each one of those. That way you can watch them without interruption. You can figure out some stuff if you like the game, if you like the idea of it. You can go watch them without me interrupting every 10 seconds or so. So, Food uh, is going to be talked about in another tutorial video, but just let's 
talk about it just here shortly as you can see three food tiers as your town grows and as your research tree um, gets high uh, gets longer i mean gets more and more in depth researched you're going to have some more and more options and more and more uh, variety of foods available and people will demand those variety of foods as you can see food tier one variety rank is satisfactory variety needed is two so that means that two food uh, tier, uh, two food um, items are needed let's say mussels and small fish and uh, later on is going people are going to as you develop your town people are going to demand food tier two they are going to demand food tier three at the end of the uh, town which means that you need to provide it otherwise if you don't provide it this food bar in the happiness uh, bar is going to drop to zero and people will leave same thing goes that's pretty crazy honestly having um so, so most city builders that I've played so far, right, there's tiers for other things, but for food, it's just food, right? There's no tier needed for food development. Uh, there's variety, right? People want more variety in their food, but I've never seen one as it goes, uh, people want a different tier of food. That's pretty cool. Instead of just a variety of food, they want a different tier of food. I have a feeling we're going to be eating a lot of fish uh, and, sea and, and uh, um, seafood, so... Uh, just my thoughts. I don't think we're raising beef down there. Uh, <laughs> probably. Uh, they need to be happy to get food. Yes, they need to be happy to get food, but they also have to have food to be happy. So uh, it's a delicate balance, I take it. This is probably going to be a hard game. Uh, this is probably going to be a hard game. It seems, like, it seems like some good reviews on Steam we read through at the beginning, and uh, there's quite a few videos when I searched it. There's quite a few videos of people playing it. Uh, so it's kind of neat. We still got a lot of videos to get through, so uh, let's finish this one up. That's not the button I wanted. It's basic goods, same thing goes for luxury. <clears throat> so this is the main things that you actually need to pay attention to. Uh, people's happiness, right? And as uh, I don't know if I uh, said it and explained it correctly, the third way for your residents to have steady growth is through natural birth rate, right? So your uh, adults are forming families inside the houses and they make children and of course you can also not uh, have any expedition um, sent to save people you can uh, you don't have to have any rescue uh, parties uh, searching for people to save you can just base your city strictly on maybe some uh, HQ uh, sending people your way which is just starting at the beginning just to help you uh, mid game later game hq is not doing that and you can just control your uh, populace by just steady birth rate right uh, they live in domes and uh, once again so that's pretty neat too um you can control the populace with just with just natural natural birth so that you don't have to go rescue people it seems if you don't want to if you don't want to grow super fast or or you've got enough people and everything's getting done and you're just kind of collecting materials and kind of playing the game at your own pace. It seems like uh, they give you multiple options to be able to play by uh, once you get um, that factory built or the, the, what is it, the, the rescue center built. Once you get it built, you can pretty much let it go and, uh, and let it go get people every, I think you said 30 or 40 days. It'll just automatically you'll get three, four, five, six people back. Uh, or... You, your starting populace will eventually start having kids and, and you can grow your populace that way. So that's kind of neat too. And this is happiness for each person individually. So you can click and on the this people. This is your society happiness. Okay. Do not get them mixed. Okay. This is his happiness and this is your society's happiness. You need to actually pay attention to also his uh, happiness because sometimes he can be to zero and society can be on 10 happiness, let's say. So he will leave, but your society is just on the brink of leaving altogether. So pay attention to that happiness part. What, what, are your, what are the odds I actually do well in my first playthrough of this? I want to see some, some comments on it. Uh, also, let me know down below in the comments uh, what do you think about the game so far. You guys, uh, you guys, interested? Let me know if you're watching later. My inhabitants would probably have seafood allergies. Probably mine too. Yeah, uh, they need to be happy to get food. Rihanna, Rihanna said, "Yeah, uh, just feed all your people lobster and caviar, which should be plentiful." You would think so. Uh, you'd think you shouldn't have an issue getting food. Um, 
Is there a number below zero? Probably, and I'll probably get there. Uh, all in all, I think this is all from a population tutorial, and I do hope it helped. So with this, we are going to conclude another video from Aquatical Tutorial Series. This is about population, and I do hope it will help. And the gamers, have fun, and see you in another tutorial video. So that's cool. That's a, that's a good tutorial video right there. And again, if you want to go uh, subscribe to Overseer Publishing, it's literally Overseer Publishing or at Overseer Publishing 4216 on YouTube. Uh, go check them out. What was that? That was the Population Diary. So this was two weeks ago. This is Food Diversity. So this is what we were talking about a minute ago. Uh, and we still got a couple of more. These are, these are really, these are long videos. I didn't think they would be this long, but uh, let's go. Uh, this is some long tutorial, the in-depth. I like it. Hello gamers and welcome to another Aquatic Hotel Vlog video and today we are going to talk about food diversity. Oh, is that farms? Is it? Well, it's farms. It's Let me give this, you guys the full view this here. bar. Food bar. Uh, as you can see, there are three tiers of food and inside those tiers, there is different kinds of food. So, what is important here for you to understand is that Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3 are, uh, let's say, your progression as your town goes bigger and as your population increases and as your population demands more and more, your food tiers are actually going higher and higher. But inside those tiers, there is a variety of foods which you need to be having. As you can see, uh, for my population right now, that is 24 plus 17 children, 24 adults and 17 children, I need to have in Tier 1 food, I need to have three variety needed and it's satisfactory for them I have more I have mussels small fish sharks sea cucumbers tuna scallops seaweed and sea snails which is a hell of a lot more than than three but that's a lot more than three also uh, keep in mind he said variety needed right plus in the tier category as well so you have food tiers and food variety uh, no Dino Nugs in Tier 1? We need Dino Nugs. Uh, so there's mussels, small fish, shark, sea cucumber, tuna, wheat, potatoes, sea snail, crab, seaweed, scallop, salmon, rice, and pumpkin in Tier 1. In Tier 2, if, you're, if, you're, if it's too small and you can't read it, if you're watching on your phone or tablet or something and you can't read this off the screen, again, I'll leave a link down below for the Overseer Publishing channel and you can just go check it out yourself later if you want to watch it uninterrupted. Uh, feared to, uh, tier, food Tier 2... There's oysters, squid, mushrooms, beans, plums, cherries, garlic, swordfish, lobster, strawberries, apples, grapevines, and fish and chips. So still make fish and chips in the game. That's that's a that's a plus. Uh, tier three is sort of limited compared to the other ones. There's sushi. There's cake. There's lobster tail, grilled oysters, seafood platters, and ramen. Uh, which is kind of neat uh, that all those are there, I think, anyway. But if you had less, it will be a problem. Like it is a problem on food tier 2. <laughs> Gabe said that garlic is a tier 3 in my book. It goes in everything in my house. Garlic is definitely a tier 3, for sure. Uh, garlic and sea salt, and put which sea salt shouldn't be an issue either. Uh, sea salt and black pepper. Uh, yeah, those three things go in everything I cook, pretty much. Either either real onion or onion onion powder. I use I use both, but not in the same dish. Depends on the dish, really. Uh, but yeah, so onion or onion powder, garlic, salt and pepper, definitely the four main tiers, and that would be a tier three in my house for sure. Uh, James said, "Smash the like button." Yeah, please hit the like button. Help me out a little bit. Uh, it helps the channel out a lot. It helps these videos get out when you interact with the the video. Hitting the like button's easy. It's easy peasy. Nothing to it. Uh, Alright, so let's get back to this now. Uh, I'm glad that I watched this one too. Uh, I don't play tutorials in games. So, not playing tutorials, it's nice to have tutorials in video form. I can just watch this and go, ah, I remember them talking about that. Cool, alright. Why it is a problem with food T2? Because I had oysters. As you can see, there is quantity, multi-produced, and monthly use. Quantity is zero for oysters. Multi produced on food tier 2, you can see oysters on the left. Multi produced is zero and monthly use is 15. People actually went through my oysters like they are potato chips, and right now I'm having a lack of oysters, which is the reason let's now get closer to how you actually control those foods, right? 
uh, that food um, tears and food demands. I'll give you guys I a full view again. oyster field. And it's 13 days until the harvest, which means that this actually a problem that is insufficient and we're already needed one right now. It's not that big of a problem, but because in two weeks, which is quite fast, we're going to have oysters and we're going to have a lot of oysters. But still, I know that I, people are going through it and my population is going to get bigger and bigger. So we need to build more fields, right? So he's got oyster fields out here. That's kind of cool. Um... And it looks like there's a, an upkeep in coins, maybe, and then how much it produces. And he said about two weeks, uh, which is not a lot. If they're using 15 per month, uh, let's go back here. They're using, so monthly used is 15. If they're using 15 per month, and it's going to take two weeks to make 345. That's still a lot. Uh, that's a lot. All right, let's go. More fields, right? So there is one more field here of oysters, and here is the second field. What you need to pay attention to right here is actually that when you are uh, not paying attention at the food uh, bar and you're not paying attention of how fast are your population eating through some oysters, squids, mushrooms, sea cucumbers, whatever. Fields which you, which we have here have a quite a long time to actually give you the produce that you actually are wanting to have. So you see days until the harvest, 196. Here, it's 256 days. Trust me, that would be a problem if I didn't have 13 days until the harvest here. If every field here was 150 to 200 days away from harvest, this then happens. This is the happiness bar. You have, of course, if you saw already a couple of our aquatic dev blog videos, especially on population, I kind of explain it in a short here i'm going to do it also here this is the food bar underneath you see happiness oxygen food warmth and so on and so forth so i'll go ahead and read out the rest of those it's happiness oxygen food warmth health basic goods luxury goods education religion housing and environment uh there's a lot of a lot of uh variables to keep your uh to keep your population happy which i think is kind of cool too again this is going to be a tough game i think uh, and somebody, as somebody that's not good at city builders at all, not even a little bit, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Food actually went from 99 to 72 in a matter of uh, two weeks. Ooh. And two weeks, that's 14 days. And this takes 200 days, 100 and what's 96 and 256. So if this wasn't so f so fast here in 13 days, I would be in problems. Because because of me lacking oysters, I would probably need to use trade port to uh, to trade for for oysters if I had uh, credits for it, and I would sh I, I I probably at that point needed to be really quick as fast as possible. You would need to handle that because once people are starting to lose that happiness and they're starting to lose in that food bar those points, and once they once they hit zero, people are leaving your town. So. Um, this is really something that need, you need to pay attention to. What, what can I say to that? So if you, if the fields are taking 100 days, 115 days, which is you know, four months. I mean, that's, that's about right. If you plant crops, it's going to take a while to grow. You don't, you don't plant it a week later, you get it. It's not like farm sim where you just skip a couple of days and then you got your crops grown. Um, so that kind of makes sense. But it's awesome that we have a, a trading port we can go to and buy things from. So that's pretty cool too. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be good, I think. Hitting the wrong button again. And uh, so you need to really open your eyes, especially for the harvest times, uh, on how and how fast people are going through the produce that you are uh, in food produce that you're actually making. So you can actually uh, try to handle that as best to your ability. So once again, food tiers. As your town is getting bigger and bigger, and as you go through your research, you see underwater fields one here. You you produce seaweed and sea cucumbers. That's not a lot of options. Uh, that's for your first research bar there for underwater fields one, the sea, sea, seaweed and sea cucumbers. That's not a lot. You see, this is... this. What's that, Gabe? It's okay that you aren't good at city builders because I'm a big fan of watching people fail at playing city builders. I'm, I'm good at that then. Uh, if we could find more, more people that like people wa or like watching people fail at city builders, my channel could be huge. Better Fool, what's up? Uh, working in Lurker, so you get the algorithm credit. I appreciate you. Uh, have a great stream. Yeah, I appreciate that. Appreciate that, Betterful. You can always come back and watch later. See my thoughts on the game and, and kind of keep up with it if you want. This is the food tier one. 
see this you find them cool let's go let's go further you have all see this wait what what did we uh, miss this is the food tier one Pro uh, uh, see this i don't you find them cool let's go let's go further you have also cages which i'm going to show you Okay. It's, sorry boys it's going to be a kind of semi-long video but it, it's really important that you actually see cages here I actually commented on that cages okay uh allows use allows us to allows us the construction of holding pins for tuna prey okay so what you need to have you see this tuna on the left 1031 tuna quantity that's what i have produced monthly is nine because there was a harvest of tuna and tuna is here this is the tuna cage. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so and that's really, really cool. Days, I'll I like have that. More tuna. The good thing is I have a thousand and thirty-one units of tuna in my storage, so I'm pretty much fine there. So, as I'm saying, people, uh, people, you go into your research bar and you're going further and further and further and further and further and further, and you go, let's How? say, to my position right now, cages two. That's lobsters. I actually made lobsters here. How big is this research yes. bar? This is the lobster, and in six days it's going to be harvest. So in six days I'm going to have, and in six days I'm going to have lobster har harvest, which is a food tier two. And in 14 days or 13 days, I'm going to have oyster harvest. So that means that in food tier two, I'm going to have a variety of two product, uh, produce. And my food variety rank is going to be satisfactory for sure for my people that, I'm, that are currently in the city. So you also need to pay attention to food tiers and the variety needed inside food tiers so you actually satisfy the needs of your populace. And as you go further and further, as I said, you build the greenhouse. How much farther? makes co uh, continental potatoes and wheat. Cool. They are linked directly to fast food and pop because pop is using wheat for alcoholic beverages and fast food is using continental, uh, continental potatoes. Wait, wait. Uh, allows construction of colorful diners that provide leisure and food to our residents. That's cool. Uh, so the pub uses wheat, so we're going to have to grow underground wheat at some point. Bone said it's further. No, it's farther. How much further? <laughs> Gabe said, I don't know how I don't know how hard it can be to catch tuna. It's already conveniently in a can. What more could you ask for? That's true. For its chips, for french fries. So... What you need to think about once you develop let's say a greenhouse you better be ready to build upon this fast food and pop because suddenly people are going to ask for fast food and pop uh, uh, items grants his ability to construct community leisure places that serve alcoholic drinks okay cool so suddenly again their their happiness is going to slightly start to drop down because you actually have opened research of you having some food to produce and that food is not being produced. So, uh, so, so suddenly people are saying, hey, we have this, we have this open. Why are we not producing it? I want it because we are at that level. Population is at that level. So once again, I'm going to conclude this video right now. I don't think that I can say anything more about it besides open your eyes to food tiers because it's your, as your town it goes uh, bigger and bigger and uh, gets bigger and bigger and your people demands more and more high quality foods you need to go through those tiers of foods and actually implement them into your town as soon as possible because if you wait for too long this could happen your happiness can start to drop even a low and low with, it, with that food bar and it can hit zero and once it hits zero your people are all, all getting out of your town and you're going to lose all your workforce and it's a question will you be able to actually recuperate uh, on that loss so yeah this is this is food diversity that's the whole point of this video for you to act for us to actually give you some understanding there are food tiers uh so the population knows how advanced your settlement research is and will demand food according yeah i know you saw that on my face i'm sitting here thinking about it i'm going wait a minute you're, when you build something, even if you're not ready to continue building and you wanted to kind of stockpile, like if I wanted to build a greenhouse and stockpile, I couldn't because they're automatically going to go, hey, we know you have this. Why don't we have this now? So you're going to have to be ready to do certain, uh, it looks like two or three maybe even certain things at a time instead of being able to build one and stockpile and then go to the next thing. That's going to be pretty tough. 
Yeah, it looks like that's all. Uh, there's a there's a few minutes left. It looks like he's just talking about it still. So let's go ahead and go back and go to the next one. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. Um, let's go ahead and do. Um, let's go ahead and do the aquatic features video. It's the shorter of the last two we got to watch here. Welcome to Aquatico. After Earth's surface became a barren and inhospitable wasteland, humanity poured their hopes into beginning a new life under the waves. Building a sustainable future, however, doesn't come easily. Set across multiple levels of the ocean floor, players will need to survive the briny depths in order to build their very own utopia. In this video, we'll demonstrate just some of the gameplay that players will experience as they take on the unique challenges of Aquatico. Oh, that looks cool. how to build a successful, thriving underwater cell. You guys see that? Let me find it again. Unique challenges Look at this. Of Look at the delivery system. Aquatico. Right in the center right there. This a, it's a, it's a um, expedition ship delivering things uh, via... Beams, I guess. Beam me up, Scotty. That's cool. Thriving underwater settlement. Your economy is the backbone of your society, and resources are the main building blocks. In Aquatico, we break this down into three key areas. Foods, basic pipeline delivered resources, and construction materials. You'll need to make sure you set up production of all essential goods. Oxygen, fuel, oil, and electricity. That sounds important. And these are transported through pipeline systems. No building can function without them. Construction materials include plastics, iron, and glass that are obtained either through trade, your own industry, or by gathering them from the seafloor. Okay. Uh, there's the there's the drones going out. When we talk things. about industry, production chains vary from simple to something more complex. For example. Your electronics factory requires some of the basic resources and also quartz and tools, while tools themselves need a smaller production chain of their own. The holy grail of your economy is to have a self-sustained system capable of generating both basic resources as well as rarer materials. So, wait a minute. So we get... Uh, we're going to have to produce tools, right? So much like any other city builder, you have to produce tools to be able to produce tools... Or something else uh yeah uh that's that's gonna be cool i think that's gonna be real cool hey what's up this eventually gg how's it going technologically for your people to enjoy in their domes varied in size domes are designed to sustain life underwater while people need to use walker suits outside of them inside they are free to enjoy their everyday lives oh look at that as your population grows, it is important to keep people happy and their needs met. This means building sufficient housing and keeping an eye on specific demands, such as food diversity, health, luxuries, education, religion, and security. Let's talk about food. As a primary resource, food is vital and its requirements need constant I think, I think we've talked about food. Growing we'll, skip, we'll skip food. There are dozens of different food sources available in Aquatico, divided into three food teams. Yeah, I, I got the I got the understanding to of food. Move from simple food gathering to tuna cages and more complex food production facilities, you'll need to use your research tree to advance your. Got that too. I like the. Uh, in Aquatico, your citizens aren't multiple tuna drones. cages. Though. Your people are integral to how your underwater world thrives. People oh, that's born, that's transport. Go to school, work, you guys see marry, that? have children, grow old, and live out their lives. Food supplies, education, health care, security, religion, luxuries, environment, and recycling are all equally important to maintain their physical and psychological well-being. Our environment system is one of those mechanics. As your people live under the sea level, they desire at least some resemblance of their prior lives. Pets, statues, fountains, trees and plants make plazas and squares that morph the rigid steel and glass environment into a thriving place to live. That looks awesome right there. That was cool. Uh, fully, fully, As your full decorations expands, and everything. You'll be managing neat. and sustaining a plethora of production chains, work drones, engineers, and specialists. In order to keep it running as a well-oiled machine, you'll unlock more mechanics to help you out. 
You can build trade ports and found trade companies to automate the commerce with other bases. Construct rescue centers to search for any survivors that may join your cause. And establish and send out expeditions to explore the abyss. Okay. It's not without dangers, but through exploring, you can also secure new resources, additional settlers, or other valuable items to aid your goals. All of these mechanics will be crucial to strengthen your colony and give it the best chance of survival. Remember, as your colony grows in size, so does the attention it draws. And oh. not all attention is good. It's the first we've heard of that. Okay, then. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so originally this was supposed to come out in 2022. Gargoyle it comes out next Thursday, though. The twenty, uh, the twenty, the 12th? January 12th, yeah. Uh, very cool, though. Uh, very cool. Uh, so we can do another dev diary, the dome. Uh, dome levels and environment. I think we skipped the environment. Let's do the dome levels, though. Because this seems fairly important, so... Uh, and again, I'll be bouncing back and forth. I'll give you guys the full view Hello here, gamers, though. gamers, and welcome to another Aquatico Dev Blog video. And today we're going to talk about domes. So what are domes? They are pressurized hubs where your people and your population live. So Maybe a uh, Leviathan. There is small dome, medium dome, and big dome. Uh, you are smashing the tab key on the keyboard to actually go into the dome view, as you can see. And here you see how it looks like already, right? So this is the small one, only one, let's say cupola, right? Uh, the medium dome has four. This is how it looks like. And the big dome is just massive, right? Comparing to medium dome is just quite the difference. And with big dome, you are, you are Holy. definitely- Holy! Uh, Look at the size of that. Look at the size of this compared to the small one. Look at that. I mean, it may be because it's higher, but I don't think so. Like, that that's this is the size of this whole thing right here. So maybe that's it. It's got one post, right? One transport post or whatever that is. Uh, and you build your small domes off of it. This one, everything is underneath. So one big dome is the size of, uh, what, eight small domes? That's crazy. It's just quite the difference. And with big dome, you are, you are definitely uh, having enough space to have everything that your heart desires, right? Like there is, uh, you can have living quarters here. Um, you really need to have a layout inside your head so everything uh, is, let's say, in order. That's how I think, right? But, uh, and the big dome, uh, you're going to have with the big dome uh, more, let's say, more high tech probably buildings. Uh, so it's going to be probably like software companies, fashion houses, concert halls sushi bars and that kind of stuff so it's always nice to think in advance of how to actually lay out your buildings your houses your production buildings and your food buildings and your entertainment buildings so you actually have nice and layout uh, dome with every notification that is possible here so the citizens uh, are actually feeling great uh, so big Big Dome really offers you quite a lot of space uh, later game, in late game, but Medium Dome for now is, actually you see- Oh, those are Medium. Here. Oh my God, and, those are Medium uh, Domes. This is, this, is, uh, this is the dome that you see how I actually build it. So it's like having jewelry store, schools, and uh, everything else. So let's talk about just uh, how the domes work, right? So That's for the crazy. domes, actually, you don't need to build pipelines inside domes, uh, right? Just to get that clear. Domes as they are, actually are going to be connected to the pipeline. You see, it's connection here, pipeline, everything is brought to the dome and dome by itself has uh, lines and pipes uh, that bring uh, everything to, uh, to uh, the houses and you know what I just realized? I thought the fields were under domes as well. They're not. They're underwater fields. They're literally underwater fields. I thought they were inside the domes. No, they're just planted in the seabed. That's crazy. And, uh, That's pretty neat. Whatever production building you're going to build. What else is the difference here? Well, uh, because they're pressurized tops, they have oxygen inside, which means that uh, you people that are living inside domes are not going to use walker suits, right? Uh, when they are outside the domes, People are using walker suits to, to walk around. Um, can we maybe find somebody with a uh, walk, walker suit? We will see. Uh so it looks like the drones are doing the farming too. So again, they said any anything outside the building, your drones are 
mostly going to be working on so that's kind of cool uh, as i will talk i will try to find some human <laughs> who is now in hiding everybody in hiding they know that, that i'm filming and then they don't want to be filmed yeah so uh, by the way yeah just to get that clarified uh, people are without walk uh, suits inside uh, there you go you see them they are using this is uh, kailani female 22 she is in a walker suit right and if she was inside dome as you can see there is also pets here which i'm going to explain later on but see people are just sitting in the benches here and just walking without suit so that's the difference also what uh, what else is there that is different right so I'm going to that's pretty cool um and i know they've touched on the walking before the the outside in the walker suits whatever but i think you can rename people and gabe said if you if you're able to name characters one must be named kevin costner yes uh for sure and then what was the bad guy in the movie what's his name um god i can uh i can I, it's, it's like i can i can see the name but i can't i can't say it i can't get it out what's that guy's name dustin uh uh dennis hopper is that who it is dennis hopper i was thinking dustin hoffman that's not that's not dennis hopper is that him the bad guy in water world yeah we'll have to name somebody that too uh, i'll probably go through and do all the members like i did before if i can rename people i'll just i'll make sure i get all the members this time around we'll just start with that that way i don't forget uh, very cool, very cool. Pause here. Uh, what's different is that yeah, Dennis the domes have different production uh, buildings and different buildings than the than the buildings that are going to be built on the sea floor. So these are the buildings. Quite different, right? Trade company, clinic, uh, schools, market, temples, hospitals, concert halls, universities for the entertainment. You have restaurants here from fast food, pub, sushi bar, oysters bar, uh, ramen restaurant, seafood diner, and cake shop. Two fine production buildings which are that are directly connected to the luxury part, which is clothes, uh, basic goods, luxuries. Uh, that's the that's the two parts that are going to build also inside the domes. Uh, so there's clothes shops, jewelry store, perfume shop, software company, gold and diamonds network provider and fashion house they actually went so far as to put an isp in here for a network provider isn't that crazy uh that's pretty cool man this is so this and oxygen is something i'm looking forward to too i played oxygen first breath and it was a lot of fun uh but this is looking really cool though hey what's up brian millard how's it going welcome welcome so that's the difference and with beautification system that is going to be explained man, in a Deacon, different yeah. video which is environment which is here on the happiness bar you see on the on the on the low all the way to the uh, below housing and religion its environment this is also a mechanic uh, which you cannot ignore you need to have and it's directly uh, connected to this beautifications which is going to be everything is going to be explained in another video but all you need to know wait, 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 wait. Low, all the way to the uh, below housing and religion its oh, environment okay. this is also a mechanic uh, which you cannot ignore you need to have and it's directly uh, connected to this beautifications which is so housing and and uh, religion are connected to the beautification process for decorations and stuff so you have to have everything those. is going to be explained in another wow. video but okay. all you need to know is beautifications also needs to be built so your happiness of your people and environment is going to be high and satisfactory because people actually want to have um, surroundings that are mirroring the life on a earth surface with greens and uh, plants and all whole ecosystems right just okay so it's it's the environment is the score that you're looking for for their happiness but it's also connected to to religion and housing as well because you want to beautify the areas apparently have a nice uh, nice that, wow, crazy living. crazy uh, so also uh there is one cool thing that I want to show you with uh, with the dome. So let me first click uh, to build the dome. Let me just try to build it. So okay, let's click here. Let's go here. We're going to press play, and uh, there is also some cool mechanic that your. Let's press a little bit faster. Uh, there is also a cool mechanic uh, that you can actually connect domes between themselves. And I'm going to just show you uh, how are you using that. So we are going to build medium dome. I don't want to build big dome. We're going to build medium dome. We're waiting for drone to actually build it. You're going to also see it. This is quite cool to see how uh, buildings are getting built here in Aquatico. Oh, check that really out. Cool feature for me. 
that's cool. Really cool. So Millard said it looks like a lot of and stuff to try yeah, to remember. You should see the first three bit. videos we watched. And then I'm going to show you how to actually connect the domes the, in between so people don't need to use walker suits to go between domes. They don't need to go to the sea floor and just walk on the sea floor to get to the dome. The, the, so the food by itself was a built, lot. Cool. This is built. We are pressing on this dome and we are pressing on the cable car. Let's lose it also like this. You see cable car here on the upkeep bar. There you go. And you want to build it right first this is the credits plastics tools it's all costing let's build it it's built and let's connect it to everything right if you can let's connect it let's go let's go that's awesome okay and this cannot be connected probably because connection is not that close or something but never mind so we have connection between two domes let's go and this is how it looks like yeah look at that Actually, Man, that's crazy. Is, you see cable cards that are actually now in use between the domes. So that's pretty wild. Actually, right now, they don't need to go on a sea surface. I mean, sea surface, sorry, sea floor. And they don't need to walk to get to another dome. There is actually cable cards that are going to drive them, as you can see here, right? Between domes, which is cool because this is just the, the nice popcorn bar for sharks they just come in they destroy the cars eat your people and they have fun your people is also every adrenal junkie that wants to have his life threatened goes into this card and just takes the ride of his life <laughs> <laughs> adrenaline he, of course, that's he, he knew true. i was laughing i'm just joking but this <laughs> is cool you know like sharks here just watching yeah i don't think that people are people are here let me just repair I mean, to be fair, if that cable car were to fall, it would fall a lot slower than if you were above the mountains, right? Is this game fully out? No, this game comes out January 12th, so it comes out next Thursday. Um, there's a demo out right now. I didn't play the demo, and I haven't watched anybody play the demo. I've had it on my wish list for a while, uh, but I never did play it or play the, play the demo or watch anybody play the demo, but it looks fantastic. So Overseer Publishing is the is the YouTube channel I'm watching right now. This is the publisher for the game. Uh, we'll go back and check out the... the um, the dev and just do a final wrap up on it here in a second this i don't think the people here are just fat enough bob let's wait for another card <laughs> so all in all yeah this is another feature that actually is connecting domes in between people don't need to go outside so and as you can see cards are here just driving left and right and connecting domes i think he just called bob fat so then they don't need to get wet so yeah with this we will conclude another dome video i do hope everything is uh, explained a little bit what domes are and what they are useful for and yeah with this we will conclude this video from aquatical devlog series and thank you for watching and boys and girls enjoy your gaming so that is that is pretty awesome right there uh, i like how the domes are a blank slate you put whatever you want to in them you can design whatever you want to so you don't build the dome and then like you have like the industrial area pop up in the dome you actually put what you want to put in there but uh, apparently, according to the happiness, you still have to think about having your school next to like a production building, right? You don't want that because it's noisy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's really cool. Uh, Gargle said, looks, game looks well detailed and thought out, pretty in-depth. Dude, it, you missed the first couple of videos too. There, there, it's, it's so, so much to this. Uh, so we watched the pipelines tutorial, which is pretty crazy. We watched the uh, population tutorial, which is pretty neat. We watched the food diversity, which is really in-depth. Not only are there three different tiers of food, but there's different varieties of food, too. And that's really cool. And if you missed those, you can go back and check them out uh, in the beginning part of the video there. Uh, wow, it's uh, yeah, pff, crazy. I mean, it's crazy. It's just, it's it's really, really in-depth. I know, I know a lot of games go in-depth, um, but... When you're thinking about something underwater, you, you have to consider all possibilities. And I think they did that. They really do. I think they did that. Uh, so the release date is January 12th, 2023. Um, the developer is Digital Reef Games and the publisher is Overseer Games. Overseer also put out the game called Patron that we played last year. Great game. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, we could watch the environment video but i think the environment video is literally the uh the decorations and whatnot in there and i think we got some of that in the the features video so we, we understood some of that from there uh very very cool though uh and i think that's going to wrap up aquatico unless you guys have any any questions or anything 
Uh, if you want me to look for something while I'm doing this, I'll look for it now. But uh, what do you guys think? Let me know. Let me know down in the comments if you're watching later. What do you guys think about this? This is really, really good. I'm digging this. Uh, Millard said, just off topic for a minute, are you going to play any more of that Wild West game? What Wild West game? Uh, I don't think I've played a Wild West game. Wild West Dynasty doesn't come out until February 16th. We'll be playing that. Uh, Wild West game. Unless you're talking about um, uh, the Oregon Trail, maybe. Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, we'll probably give it another go at some point. Uh, my fear is they put too much in-depth that something more superficial and uh, crucial gets overlooked or is less polished. I've seen it too many times. That's true, too. They focus too much on the depth and not enough of the basics, maybe. Um, but it doesn't look like it. This looks really good. I think this is going to be a, a lot of fun to play here. Oh, the saloon one. Uh, saloon? No, probably not. No. Uh, I never was good at it. <laughs> I never could figure out the game, man. I couldn't figure out how to play it. Uh, you're probably thinking about Saloon. Uh, was it just called Saloon? I can't remember the, uh, something, Dead Saloon something? I don't know. What's up, Billy? How's it going, buddy? Um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, what do you guys think? What do you guys think about Aquatico? Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'll be streaming this next Thursday on January 12th. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, should be a lot of fun, I think, anyway. Man, there's a lot going on there. <laughs> From from sending your your expedition teams out to having a building that automatic a rescue center that automatically sends uh, a rescue team every thirty or forty days to bring back bring back other other people um, to to your happiness levels. There's like fourteen different elements for happiness, which is crazy. There's three different tiers of food, and then there's different varieties of food in each tier. Pretty wild. There's a lot going on there. Um, it looks really good to me. Yeah. Oh, Oregon Trail. Okay, yeah, we're probably gonna go. We're probably jump back into Oregon Trail at some point. I want to play some more of it. It looks really. I mean, it's 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 getting really fun. You got to do the side quests and stuff to be able to unlock stuff for the main the main uh, trick to Oregon. So uh, we'll probably check out another side mission or something on it. Uh, but this is looking really really good. I'm digging this. You guys want to check out? Uh, you guys want to check out the uh, World War II Rebuilder? Let's go check this one out now. Uh, let me see if I can find something on YouTube from... Uh, no, Raptor, I don't want to watch you play it live. Ra Raptor's in all these videos. Uh, what is it? Uh, Magnetic Games? See if we can find Magnetic Games. Magnetic... Games. Magnetic Games SA, maybe? Ah, yes. Here we go. Videos. Okay, so we got... Uh, we've played the demo for this, so I don't, I don't have to go too in-depth with this. Uh, I just want to show uh, maybe the trailer. And that should be about it, because we've played, we've actually played the game. Uh, but it comes out on the 16th of January. So this comes out in uh, a week, uh, two weeks yesterday. It comes out in two weeks yesterday. It comes out on Monday the 16th. Uh, and they've got a lot of other stuff too here. Uh, Photography Simulators Them, uh, Lost Lies is Them, uh, Mythos Slavic Builders Them, and... Uh, medieval Builders, which they just put out 12 days ago, so we'll have to check that one out too. All right, let's check out. Uh, let's check this out here. Where where is my capture? There. Uh, let's check this out here. Uh, so let's watch the um, Germany prologue. This is Hamburg cinematic trailer. Let's watch the cinematic trailer real quick.
I really like the way this looks. All right, let's go back and check out the, I was trying to turn my, my noise gate, or not my noise gate, my, my gate, not my gate, my compressor. My compressor up a little bit. All right, here's the, here's the official trailer. It came out three months ago. And yes, you can actually take that dozer and run it through there. Oh, we didn't build a Ferris wheel, though. Artillery? Oh, they're loading the shell. Oh, that's cool. We didn't get to that part. I don't think we painted anything either. Uh, we put down some light poles and stuff. I don't think we painted anything, though, the outside of buildings. Uh, very, very cool. Uh, cities from the ashes. There you go. Uh, very neat. Very neat. What else we got? Uh, I'm going to leave this because I want to come back and check out the medieval builders here in a second. Strongholds and castles. Uh, and that came out 12 days ago. Uh, we'll check that out in a second. Let's go back and check out some of the images here. What is the video? I think this is the official trailer. We'll just watch the whole thing right here like this. I can't go full screen because I don't have it on screen capture. Time out. Time out. Right here. Did just do a 180s off the set with a with a with a bike. That's pretty funny. Power restored. Oh, wow. Did you guys see that? Hey, we did that. We did that in the, in the, in the game we played, or the part of the game we played. Uh, all right, so let's check out some of these screenshots real quick, and I'll just go ahead and go back to... Uh, nope, that one. There we go. Let's go back over here. We'll check out some of the screenshots. Uh, so we got the dozer, which I don't think... I think we got to drive it for a minute. I didn't do a whole lot with it. Uh, so this says tenant, tenant house right here. Uh, that's a big place. It looks like it's got a, it's got a garden and everything on it. That's kind of cool. Uh, and then of course we, we kind of went through most of this. We saw all this, uh, you collect all the old materials, you re refurbish it into something else. Uh, I really like that screenshot right there. That's really good. Uh, and if you didn't know, this is based on historical settings. So it's, uh, based on historical happenings, which is really cool even because you get some history behind it. But it's also a uh, um, kind of a, a rebuilder simulator, a res restoration simulator type game. But it's still, you get some actual history in there, cool, which, uh, too, which is very cool. Uh, I really like this one, too. Uh, the shipyard, very, very cool scene there. Um, the magnet, it looks like you're dropping stuff into a shredder. That's kind of cool, too. Uh, we didn't get to play with that at all. Uh, we played with some of this. Looks like we got some. Uh, trailers instead of just bins, trailers pulled out here. We played with the wrecking ball. That was a lot of fun. Uh, pump out water, water level, water level 100%. It says, so it looks like we're at a pumping station maybe there. Uh, and then of course the dozer again, the dozer work. We played with the dozer some. Um, very, very cool though. Man, so cool. This, the scenery is very cool, but again, it's the historical aspect of it. I think that's the best part. There's just so much you had to not mean to click that twice. Uh, so this is after the after World War II. This is the rebuilders that went in and kind of the stories told from that and the happenings and the reasons why and what actually happened that day. There's a lot of history in the game as well as gameplay and, and being able to rebuild stuff too. Uh, this was one of the, the first missions you get, I think, uh, rebuilding the train station. Uh, that was a lot of fun. There's a lot of historical stuff. This was the second one I think we did. It is, yeah. We never painted anything, though. It looks like those are painted. We didn't paint those. 
Maybe we should have. Uh, and then we destroyed this building. We got to rebuild it. Um, this is, uh, oh, this is London. London Necropolis, yeah. Uh, very, very cool. Uh, so build the new future of Europe. Uh, flip, renovate, repair, and rebuild. Places destroyed during World War II. Get to know the history and the stories of civilians. Play an immense building simulator with grappling storytelling. And it really is, too. It's fantastic. It comes out January 16th. So like I said, uh, not, not this coming Monday, but next Monday, so two weeks from yesterday, this comes out as well. It is from Magnetic, not Magnetic, but Madnetic Games, and Playway is the publisher. Uh, Madnetic Games is also the developer. Uh, there is a demo you can play. It's out. Uh, so you can go check it out. It looks like similar games is Out of War and Medieval Dynasty somehow. Both of those. I'm not real sure. but um, uh, Other games, of course. There's going to be a lot. Playway, Contraband Police, Photography Simulator, stuff like that. Uh, the system requirements for this is uh, minimum i3-91, uh, 9100, uh, or a Ryzen 3 2300X, 8 gigs of RAM, 1050 Ti, or an RX 560 with 4 gigs of RAM. Uh, DirectX version 12, Windows 10 minimum. Uh, 36 gigs of available space. That's that's a pretty big game if you ask me. Uh, and then recommended is um, 3.6 gigs or higher. 3.6 gigahertz or higher for AMD or Intel CPUs. Uh, Ryzen 5 3600X or Intel uh, i5-8600K or newer. 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, a 2060 6 gig or a Vega 50, uh, 56 8 gig or newer video card, uh, broadband internet connection, and 36 gigs of available space. So uh, it seems like a pretty large game. Um, more from Magnetic Games. They did, uh, like I said, myth, myth, uh, Mythos, Build and Survive, Lost Lies. I never played that one. When did that come out? Oh, it hadn't come out yet. Okay, cool. Uh, neither is Mythos. Yeah, I was about to say I hadn't played any of those. They have a lot of games that look like they're coming this way. Um, there's a Germany prologue. We never played the Germany prologue. And then we got uh, Medieval Builders Strongholds. We're going to check that out in a second. Uh, what do you guys think about WM2 Rebuilder? We did play this for a little while. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I liked it. Probably going to probably gonna get get some more of that going. Uh, not not when it comes out, but probably the day after. Because uh, we got our Medieval series. We're running Medieval Dynasty right now. Crystal got to run. All right, see you. Have a good one. I appreciate you. Off topic, did you see that Ken Block... Uh, what? Ken Block died? No. No, 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 no. No, no. I was watching his uh his his uh mountain run the other day they did in the Porsche they built. There's no way. There's no flipping way. Gargle said that was the same bike as Farmer's Life. Probably a lot of the assets are shared, especially amongst uh Playway published games. Uh it seems like you'll see a lot of the same assets. Uh dude, there's no way Ken Block died. What? Died yesterday. What the heck? Man. Oh, uh, that's terrible, man. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I mean, there are times I don't, I don't watch it weekly or anything, but there are times I go, uh, I go check out the, the Hoonigan channel and just watch the, watch his daughter racing the Hoonicorn. Snowmobile accident. Wild. Wild, dude. One of the best drivers on the planet died in a, sm a snowmobile accident. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> he was actually. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Wow, I didn't know that. Wild stuff. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments about WW2 Rebuilder. Let's go check out this other game here. Uh, Medieval Builders. So I haven't seen anything about this one yet. I'm just going to pull up the screenshots first, and then we'll go check out the YouTube video over there, too. Uh, so it looks like it's going to be similar to everything else, but just medieval style. This should be kind of fun. Uh, oh, wow. Do we actually have to, like, fight things? I don't know. All right, here you go. So here's the building part of it. Looks like we got our old medieval hammer there. Uh, we're going to be smashing down some stuff and then rebuilding it. I and... thought that was tornado sirens. It wasn't. We're good. Um, is that a chicken coop? Looks like a chicken coop in the background. The old house here from the medieval times. Very cool. Uh, a vice or buffalo, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so it looks like there's some farmland to rebuild too. So very neat. It looks very basic. Uh, this is coming soon. Again, this is uh, Mad Madnetic and Playway. There is no date on it yet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add that to my wish list just because. 
Uh, let's go check out this video here now. Looks a lot like Castle Flipper, doesn't it? Are you gonna hunt? What? Okay, I gotta see what that was again. Uh, rules: weapons to be sheathed at all times. No passing out on the floor. On the floor, no witchcraft. That's funny. Wait a minute. Time out. That is a ram with no skin and is just bones. I thought it said no witchcraft. Medieval builders, strongholds, and castles. Add to your wish list. So this is under Magnetic Games. I'll leave a link to Overseer and Magnetic both in the description below for later. Uh, looks really cool though. I mean, it could be something we play once or twice. I don't think it's going to be something that's going to have longevity. Uh, I kind of agree with Gargle. I just literally just ran up on this when I was looking for the other videos. I agree with Gargle, though. This does kind of look like uh, the Iron Sim game that flopped. I hope it's not the same dev under a different name. No, Magnetic Games, I don't think, uh, is the same. Uh, let's just go look at their page here. No, it's the, this is the devs that's doing WW2 Rebuilder. I don't, I don't think it's the same devs at all. Uh, even though they don't have a full game out yet, Gargle, so it might be... It might be uh, the... It could be. I mean, I don't know. It could be. Um, the same devs, but rebranded slightly. I don't know. Uh, but either way, there you go. I'm going to go ahead and follow them on Steam, too. That way I can get an update on all their stuff they're working on. Uh, very cool. Very cool, indeed. Uh, I'll just flip over to my wish list here. And we can kind of look at what we got coming. I did find two new games recently. Um that I'm definitely going to be playing. One of them is the day before. Uh, not to be confused with um, the ground division. Not the same thing. The day before, I have I have asked uh, in Nitrato's partner server in Discord if if it's possible they get they get they get to put this on servers. And if we can get a dedicated server, I'd love to run one of these for the community. Uh, the day before is an open world MMA survival set in a deadly post pandemic America overrun by flesh hungry infected and survivors killing each other for food, weapons, and cars. So I'm not the zombie, the zombie thing's kind of gone way far out there. Um, I'm not really looking forward to that aspect of it, but I think it could be fun as, a, as an open world MMO survival game. I think it could be fun. Um, and especially if we could do a community server where only people that are, that have to, they have to go into discord, they have to go into, they have to give themselves a certain role and then they can join the server that, that way we don't have just people trolling all the time. We can actually get on there and work together and play. I think that would be fun. Um, uh, I just, I don't care anything about the zombie aspect of it, but the survival MMO open world, I think would be a lot of fun, especially if, especially if some other content creators we know like sheep or gargoyle or, or, uh, anybody else was gonna was gonna jump in and play this. They could all stream their perspectives at any point, make content at any point. I just think it'd be a lot of fun to do. You know, I, I want something. Uh, and I know that um, Sheep is looking forward to this game. He, he's actually sure Sheep is actually the reason I saw this. I saw it on his Twitter. He retweeted it, and I was like, oh well. Wow. Uh, and apparently, there this is number two, according to Steam DB, in wish list. So as far as wish wish listed games go, this is number two right now. Uh, and it comes out March first, twenty twenty three. I'll be doing a, we'll be doing an in depth look at this. We'll be checking out some dev logs and stuff as it gets closer. Uh, we'll come back and look at that one. Uh, the other game I am looking forward to is right here somewhere. 
that is right here. So where'd it go? Is it down at the bottom? Still down here? Edge of Collapse. Yeah, this is it. Uh, Edge of Collapse. So I've started listening to the, the audio book. This is actually based on a book. Uh, and I've started looking to the, uh, listening to the audio book of this before I found it. Uh, I typed into Edge of Collapse and noticed that um, uh, Raptor popped up. And I was like, wait, why is Raptor in this? I thought this was a book. Uh, but apparently they the, the game is based off the book, which is gonna be really cool. But I'm currently listening to the audiobook. I'm in like an hour and a half into the to the point five episode, which is like the the uh uh what's it called? Um the prologue. I'm in the, like halfway through the prologue maybe. Uh but this looks really good too. Uh it's it's basically an EMP, right? It's an EMP scenario. Uh, and I've just finished the entire series of Small Town EMP. Great book, great audio book. If you, if you don't have time to sit and read, listen to the audio books. Fantastic. Uh, it's about an EMP going off and, and people, you know, getting together and figuring out what happened. Uh, very cool. But, uh, yeah, this looks really good, too. I know the gra a lot of people go, oh, I don't like the graphic style. That's fine. Uh, it's not so much about the, the, the quality of graphics as the art style that it is. It's a different art style. So a lot of people naturally are not going to like this art style. Uh, but it looks very much like a point and click um, type game. It looks like it's setting some traps there. We're going to do a uh, in-depth look at this too as it gets closer. Once once they have some devlogs and stuff out, I'm going to find some info on this. I've already got playlists put together for all the Dynasty games, uh, for Wild West, for Sengoku. Every time they release a devlog, I'm going to, going to put them together. The 1st of February, the Talking Tuesday, is going to be uh, Wild West Dynasty, of course, because it'll come out in two weeks after that. So... I'll be checking that out for sure. But yeah, this game looks good. Edge of Collapse. I've got a wish list following it. Uh, Mini Dev Studio and Bingle Games uh, should be really good if you like uh, that that post post apocalyptic style setting. Uh, again, this is based off an audiobook, and from what I counted, it's like seventy hours worth of audiobook uh, that I'm gonna have to listen to uh, to finish up anyway. Uh, but yeah, I, I I mean I'm. I'm up for anything like this, of course, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they do the game. I'm going to listen to the book, so we'll see what happens with the game and how the book relates to the game. Uh, and then another one, uh, I mentioned Oxygen. Oxygen's in another one of those. You see the domes uh, kind of popping up there. Uh, we played Oxygen First Breath. If you want to go watch that video, go back and check it out. I played it. It was, it was a lot of fun, though. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It's a different take on survival. Uh, and then Winter Survival doesn't have a release date anymore. It actually had a release date at some point. But I'll be keeping up with these, and as they come along, once a month we'll pop in here. We'll do a we'll do a Talking Tuesday and just talk about it. Um, but that kind of that kind of covers that anyway. Uh, can't believe Ken Block died, man. That is that is terrible. I'm so dumb I can't read an audio book. Yeah, I have trouble with them. <laughs> uh, Nightingale, Nightingale is good. Yeah, where where's Nightingale at? I've got it down here somewhere, don't I? Somebody saw it, I'm sure. Or maybe you, maybe you didn't see it, but uh, you just mentioned a Nightingale. Nightingale's going to be good, too. Uh, I'm hoping we can put some, some multiplayer together with that because that's, that's what that, that game kind of depends on it, doesn't it? Oh, I saw Pirate Simulator as well. I don't know where I saw this, but... Come on. No, I have a good connection. Let's go. Uh, start a rebellious career as a poor sailor and climb your way up to become the richest, most... Dangerous captain of the archipelago. Take over the sea routes and set up hideouts. Build fleets and fight enemy crews to lead a legendary pirate life. This is coming soon at Spaceboat Studios and Playway. Uh, it, I mean, it looks pretty decent. It looks, it looks pretty decent. The art style looks good. So there's not very many screenshots. But it, it looks pretty decent nonetheless. Uh, cafe owner simulator. It's playway game, so it'll probably have some some other things there too. Um, where was Nightingale at? When does it come out? I, it should be at the top of my list. I don't know why it's not up some, somewhere at the top anyway. Is it down here at the bottom. No, Bridge. I've only got you know what 147 games on here. Nightingale. There it is. Yeah, Nightingale looks really good too. Again, as we get closer, I'll start looking up some YouTube channels uh, for the devs and see if they put out dev vlogs and stuff like that. Come on, man. Uh, but yeah, Nightingale, if you guys haven't seen it, go go look it up on Steam. It looks fantastic. Like the art style, the 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 way the world works, the way you can hop in and out. Like 
It's it looks really good. Uh, also, giants apparently. I didn't realize that was a thing. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know what that thing is, but yeah, this looks like a lot of fun. Uh, we'll be checking all that out as they get closer, like I said. So the next one we do, we got uh, Deliver Us Mars on February 2nd. So I really need to take, um, and we might do this tomorrow because I don't really have anything planned, and play Deliver Us the Moon. Uh, I may do it over two or three streams. It depends on how long it takes. I think I did it over three streams on Twitch. So it's about six hours worth of footage. Uh, I may do it over two or three streams. But Deliver Us Mars comes out February 2nd. I really want to play Deliver Us the Moon again to kind of get the, you know, how it sets up or whatever. So we'll be playing that soon too. I, get that. I may start tomorrow, actually. I'm, I'm tired of putting it off. We'll just start it tomorrow uh, and play back through it because I didn't get all those episodes put on YouTube. I only put one, I think, on here. So we'll, we'll just start it over. Uh, the day before comes out March 1st, and uh, Sons of the Forest comes out in February. Moon Farming comes out quarter one. Atomic Heart comes out February 20th. I don't know that I'll be streaming it, but I'll be playing it. Really looking forward to Art of the Rail. It's probably something I'm going to put on my Pixel channel. Uh, it looks really, really good, though. It's from uh, Rocket Games, or Rocket, what is it called? Rocket Works. Uh, so this is Rocket Two Guns, the guy that made DayZ. He's always been a fan of trains. He did like a whole interview thing where he talked about it, and he wanted to make a game. So he made one, uh, but yeah, Rocket Works. Uh, Rocket Works is also the devs for Icarus. So same same people, but Art of the Rail looks really good. Uh, and I think that's really all I have that has. Well, Roots of Potch has got a release date now, April twenty fifth. That's new. I didn't see that release date before. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, Farm and Fix twenty twenty got pulled off of Steam completely. I think so. Uh, when are you going to have a talk on Tuesday about the massive elephant in the room, Arc 2? You know you're going to play. You know you can't resist. Well, it really depends on the day before. Um, I don't, I saw Arc 2 a second ago. Where is it? <laughs> uh, we'll, do, we'll do a talk on Tuesday on, the, on Arc 2 when it gets closer. Let me find it again here. Uh, I saw it. I, just, I don't remember where we're at. Uh, Far North is another survival game I'm looking forward to. Uh, I got a lot on here, really. I mean, we, you, we did the same thing last time I did this. I just talked about all the games I've got on my wish list I'm looking forward to. If, if there's anything I'm missing that's in a survival uh, setting, something like the day before, or... Um, uh, where in the crap is it? Right here somewhere, right? Uh, there it is. Arc 2. This is 2023. So when we get a release date, we'll do a Talking Tuesday on it. Uh, I just want to, I just want to, uh, put together a family, you know, and sit around the table and, and toast and, and talk about family and how important family is and family because, you know, family, <laughs> uh, yeah, when we get closer, we'll do We'll do one for that. Uh, I think that'll be good. Uh, what was the other one that I just, just mentioned? Uh, Edge of Collapse, yeah. If you, I mean, if you know of any other games like this that I don't have on this wish list, and there's a lot here, uh, feel free to pause at any point here and take a look at them. I've got a bunch on here already. Uh, throw them in the comments below. I'd love to know what you guys think and it, games that I've missed or, or maybe interested in or whatever. Uh, that's going to do it for Talking Tuesday, though. I appreciate you guys for being here. Um, that concludes all of the talk about the games anyway. Uh, it's crazy that Ken Block died. I mean, just wild. Like, I never, ever, ever would have would have thought that was a thing. Uh, actually, heartbreaking. Honestly, it's actually heartbreaking. Let's let's try this. Let's try this main main cam here. Uh, I cannot believe Ken Block died. That is just it. Just blows my mind. Like, actually. Kind of upset. Uh, Gabriel said earlier, though, if you. Um, Anyone who skateboarded back in the 90s knew Ken Block. Devastating. Um, I was just watching a series where he was turning over the Hunicorn versus the world to his daughter. Yeah. Uh, so I've been, I watched some of the drag races a couple, couple of weeks ago, man. Um, just kind of getting caught up on them. The Hunicorn versus everything. Yeah. Crazy though, dude. I cannot believe that. One, seriously, one of the best drivers in the world dies in a snowmobile accident. I guess it just goes to show you never really know, right? Crazy. Um, yep, see you on Twitch, Gargle. 
Uh, I am going to be done for the day, though. I appreciate you guys for being here, as always. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, if you want to come hang out on Twitch here in about an hour, I'll be doing some more farming on Iowa Plains View. Our community server for Farm Sim will kick off this Friday. I released a trailer today, so if you want to go check out kind of what's setting up, there's some... Uh, some the, the farm's pretty set up, so you can kind of see in the background uh, as I'm scrolling through to see everything. Um, uh, if you want to pick out the details on what's on the farm, you can. But it's community server. It's cross-play. If you play Farm Sim on consoles, you're more than welcome to join us. Jump in Discord. Follow the welcome message. Uh, tomorrow, probably going to start Deliver Us the Moon uh, and play through that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Deliver Us Mars coming out soon, so I want to... You know, I want to try to get that in. Uh, but that's going to do it. I appreciate you guys. I'll see y'all next time. Later, folks.